oh, I'm like, why is it now? Why is my audio not pulling in? But then I realized it's also because, um, because I, there it is. Because I haven't switched it over yet. This is some good music. I like this. It's almost like a... It feels kind of like a jazzy Ocarina of Time remix. That's what it feels like to me. Oh, I'm gonna assume that the music and all this shit is like approximately where I want it. And uh, may God have mercy on your eardrums. Yeah, because of the harp. And the, um. The, the, the beat in the background, not so much, but that other instrument that I can't place. That one. Is that a type box at the bottom? It's not, but it sure as fuck looks like one. <laughs> Is that a flute? It's very... For lack of a term, better term, nasally for a flute. For like a traditional flute, anyway. Could be. I'm curious now. <laughs> I know this sounds bad, but if I were asked to describe it, I would describe it as an Asian flute. Because I know I've heard this instrument before. Let's be music. We finally have the correct tracks in HWM, so I made announcements today for the new content release. Another oh I wanna now I wanna go listen to them. Okay. Maybe we'll do that after we're done with this game. October thirty first. Way past midnight. Nowhere plots station. Line three of the subway. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's yeah. That's what I was kind of thinking, like a reeded flute. Yeah, you should do that. While you're at it, you should uh, ask me that question. <laughs> oh, my tea's still too hot. 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 Mm -mm. Okay, I I guess. Um, I don't know if I can. You can. I assure you, you can. I'm an open book. No, no, no. I almost burnt my finger, though, when I wrapped it in, in the um, handle. I got lucky. I realized that it was still a little bit too hot too qu before I actually took a drink. That's where you find yourself, waiting for the last train to take you home. Hasn't Mom ever told you to get a driver's license? or to think about returning from Buckwild Halloween parties earlier. Also, your costume is stupid. <laughs> okay. I like the writing so far. Is this, I, I'm trying to figure out if this is like an actual voice actor or if this is a, like an auto reader. And if it's an auto reader, I want to know how to turn it off. 
Yes, exactly, Morphe. I almost feel like it's intentional, though. But, like, I know... Either Rempai or, um... Or... Uh... Or Nani Novel has a built-in auto-reader, and I can't remember which one it is that has it. Maybe both do. Ah, uh, what am I going to respond with? I think this is a cool costume. The fuck? I guess it isn't stupid, and so what, even if it is? This whole station is decorated for Halloween. That's just what people do. Anyway, learning to drive means no drinking, and what kind of party would that be? But maybe it's not too late to get out of here and call a taxi. That's what people even with driver's licenses do. That's, uh, here. Yeah. Yeah, Rempai. That's what I thought Rempai had to build an it auto-reader. It really is now, isn't it? I'm guessing because the, narr the main character's voice isn't being read, it's not the auto-reader, and it's actually a voice acting. But it's in, I feel like it's intentionally the way it is. Although decorating stations is pretty new. Wonder how big the subway company's budget was for all this that to be brought to life. Shaking your head in slight disbelief, you pull out your phone. No signal, it reads. Be not afraid, it also reads. That's the worst thing you can possibly see. You never want to hear those words. I am not afraid. Aren't you? Having nothing else to do, you just look around the station. This late, it is very much empty. As in, you are the only person here, desperately wanting to also not be here. That's fair. <sighs> uh, look at the bones. Are they made of styrofoam? No. They would have been blown away by the wind. Could be. Could be a Robo Bono. Look at the vending machine. Bright yellow, full of chocolate bars and ridiculously overpriced water bottles. Doesn't accept cards, like the outdated evil machine it is. I like the the ram. I want the ram plushie. Or maybe the knife. Give me the knife. Oh, but the book with eyes. That's a good one too. Yeah, the potion bottle is just the just a fucking uh, a fucking fancy drink. Although maybe if the potion bottle, the bottle itself is made out of glass, then maybe it's acceptable. <laughs> It's Sarah's book. Look at the time Potsdam table. Potsdam Pirsch, seven minutes. Genshagener Heide, 29 minutes. I feel like None of these are your train. You'll need to wait longer. Okay, that right there is... Uh, I mean, it still could be a voice, a robotic voice that they recorded. Um, but, and then, then cut themselves and, and mess, mess that particular line up. But, um. Potsdam Pirsch. I don't minutes. see a. Genshagener Heide. 29 minutes. I don't see a None robot these pronouncing these words train. correctly. You'll need to wait longer. And those were pronounced correctly. So. Look at the graffiti. The veil is thinning. <laughs> Just like my hair. I mean, what? The red paint does look very organic alongside the whole Halloween design. You can't even tell if the graffiti was there all along or if it's the work of some designer desperately wishing to be featured on Pinterest. You sigh. It's very boring waiting when you don't even have an internet connection to mindlessly scroll Twitter for hours on Feeling end. called out again. 
All the vodka with lemon soda and gummy bears that you drank at the party is also starting to wear off. I guess we're taking a nap in the subway. On one hand, you're slightly sleepy from the booze and staying up late. On the other hand, oh, you're you are risking right. the possibility of it. missing your train and looking like a pathetic homeless yeah. party. Yeah. Namely, a lost, overgrown lamb, if your Eurostore horns are any indicator. Yeah, I I have, and I and Quiplash is one of the only games I play I've played consistently. Yeah, it does remind me of the Quiplash narrator a lot. So come into the darkness anyway. Yay. Of course, an old grumpy narrator is no authority for that foolish youth of yours. Despite your best intentions, your eyelids feel heavy, and exhausted from waiting and doing nothing, you fall asleep. The wind is your only lullaby. I like that line. <laughs> it's kind of lonely, though. Maybe that's why I like the line. Wake up. You are awoken <laughs> by the sound of someone's quiet sobs echoing across the empty station. There is a woman sitting on one of the benches now. It looks like she's crying. Oh look, we can save again. I'm so happy. You rub away the remnants of a shitty nap on a stiff bench from <laughs> your eyes and cast a quick side glance at the woman. Maybe her feet hurt. Those heels look difficult to wear, yes. You, and you her know... whole attire, it's either ridiculous or extremely designer. It's weird looking, but in a very expensive kind of way. You can't describe it properly. Perhaps it's like if a top manager wanted to dress up for a costume party using only what they had in their high-fashion wardrobe. It's weird enough to be eye-catching, but not strange enough to be read as a costume. I'm just saying, if her feet hurt, maybe we should sweep, the, sweep her off them. She's crying after all. And there's no better time to chat up a girl in the middle of a subway when she's already feeling distraught about something. Now my tea is cool enough to drink. It is making me feel better. I did not have a drink of my tea earlier because I already had a drink, leftover drink from dinner. So I did not make tea for the first game. I mean, no sane person would wear red velvet in their daily life, but also no trashy Halloween costume store would make a velvet gown this structured and fitting. <laughs> She's at her lowest point. Surely talking to me won't make her feel any worse, right? Hey, I mean... If, if nothing else, talking to me will make her remember the times she wasn't having to talk to me, and thus will, inst will remember that maybe the problems she had prior to this moment were not quite so bad after all, because now she has a much worse problem, the fact that she is talking to me. What is the story behind her outfit? Her crying? Her being here? She looks as if she definitely should have an SUV with a driver dressed in a black suit waiting to ferry her to her next appointment. Something must have saddened her enough, because it is a heartbreaking sign. Someone who should be harvesting the ripe fruits of life is instead crying alone and unseen after midnight at a subway. You approach her with compassion in mind. Yeah, yeah, compassion. That's, that's why I was approaching her, definitely. And maybe curiosity. Let's be honest, you're really curious about what brought her here. Yeah, no, not so much that one. I can fake compassion, but faking curiosity, nope. Hey, are you okay? Her shoulders tremble a bit when she looks up to you. She is definitely not okay, but she puts on a smile. It is a lie to call her smile beautiful. Would you like to know the truth? You're wrong, Mr. Narrator. You are wrong. 
Yes. Give me the truth. A truth seeker, huh? There is nothing exciting about her smile. It's bleak and bland in its obligatoriness. A standard response of a person in her position. It's almost offensively predictable. Yeah, vampire girl. There are no tears on her face, but her eyes are red. I am. Don't lie. Or maybe I'm not. But do you really wish to listen to the problems of someone you've just met for the first time in your life? If so, I'm willing to share. Damn it. Or maybe I'm not. <laughs> she chuckles and nods towards the timetable. Although my train is going to be here anytime soon. You follow her direction and look at the timetable. Gehenna of Fire, anytime soon, it reads. Let's go. Been a while since I've been to Gehenna. I hear it's lovely this time of year. There is also running text below. The Heaven's Gates are closed for reconstruction. Please take alternative routes to salvation. See, anytime soon, although more precise timing would have been much appreciated. More precise timing, she said. Well, the prophecies are never known for their precision. True. She and the likes of her know what is coming, and for them, a year's difference is immaterial, insignificant before the end of all things. Take a seat, sweetie. Um. You place your sweetie butt on a giant goat skull nearby. Or was it sweaty? You can't tell. <laughs> God damn it. My story is rather trivial, in fact. Look at me. Oh, trust me, I've been doing nothing but looking at you since the moment I saw you. You're looking. A successful rise to the top. Valued by the superiors. Respected by the subordinates. I have everything a woman could ask for. Except for... a child. <laughs> it sounds like... It sounds like you have something I want, and I have something you want. I feel like... I feel like we can come to a compromise. A... Compromise. It might sound rude or intrusive, but... She doesn't look old, you know? <laughs> what stops you? Oh no. Oh no. You're not prepared to confront someone's possible infertility. It's hard even for medical professionals, and it always makes the other person in the conversation extremely uncomfortable and awkward. Like, how do you even offer comfort if there isn't one? I'm sorry your father died in a tragic accident that was not his fault, but here the weather is nice today, isn't it? I'm loving this narrator. My generation is too old. My blood is potent. The elders of the clan forbade me from ever having a child. It is too late for me now. You mean your family? <laughs> you mean the clan? No, I wouldn't go as far as to call them a family. They're more of a corporation than a dynasty nowadays. That's one messed up family for sure. But as they say, all happy families are the same, but every miserable one is messed up in its own way. <laughs> um, can't you go against your clan? Oh, you speak dangerous words, sweetheart. How much to ask for someone to call me that once in a while? 
Her voice oh becomes dreamy, almost tender, eyes glowing with excitement. I so wish to share my blood with someone, to embrace them with my might, and teach them to walk the path of shadows, to hold their hand and lead their teeth to sink into their first victim, to introduce them to the wonders and the secrets that blood holds at the tip of the tongue, to watch and guide as they make their first steps deeper into the darkness. Isn't motherhood wonderful, sweetheart? Uh, yeah, maybe. Sharing your experience and knowledge can feel rewarding in its own way. You're entirely way too sweet. That's entirely way too condescending, despite how sad and vulnerable she looks. As if at her lowest, she is still more than you could ever dream to be. <laughs> Did <laughs> you miss anything good? Yes, you missed a lot of... You missed some good shit. <clears throat> I'm actually depressed because the jokes would have been right up your alley. Ugh. I don't read a purse. I mean, what? Can I hug you? Uh, Yeah. It wouldn't be unreasonable to expect yourself to be enchanted right now. Like, if her red eyes were glowing magically and you were unnaturally drawn to her presence and had lost your own consciousness and free will. No such luck, though. You feel extremely self-conscious and awkward when she pets you on the head. It's just that feeling when you kind of have to say something, but you really don't know what. So instead, you hyper-focus on the position of your own limbs in space. I simultaneously love this narrator and hate this narrator. I love them because they are 100% accurate, and I hate them because they are constantly calling me out. Thank you, stranger. She wraps her arms around your head. You feel her chest touching your ear. Oh, she tall girl. There's no heartbeat. <sighs> I really should let you go, shouldn't I? No, 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 no. Both of you can hear the sound of an arriving train, and it brings along the smell of pomegranates and bone marrow. Okay, now I want to know who wrote this, because how do they know what the train to Gehenna smells like? Thank you for the comfort, stranger. Exactly, you get me, Morphe. The smell is tangy, gamey, and surprisingly sweet in a rather nauseating way. Or would you like to join me, perhaps? There are many secrets a mother can share. Your head vaguely hurts. You yearn for fresh air. the train arrives. Oh, I see. You are most welcome, then. With a spinning head, you take her hand and follow her lead. The hand in yours is cold. I don't give a shit if the hand in mine is cold. The point is, is that there's a hand in mine. Fuck and up, when Mary the there. automatic doors close behind you, you take a seat in the empty car and close your eyes. Wherever you were trying to go before, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah, we found a much better place to go. We will burn soon. Yay! <clears throat> Sand tiger shark eggs hatch while still in the womb. They soon develop teeth and start to relentlessly devour unfertilized eggs and each other until only one embryo emerges victorious and is born into the world already an experienced killer. I am going to have to fact check that, but if that is true, that is metal as fuck. It is a rule of nature, and living beings are but vessels for their genes to be passed down further. Humanity is a womb full of shark embryos. 
and sometimes one is born into the darkness, their eyes yet blind, but their teeth already bloodied. Your heart is that of a mother's. Even if it is not beating, it yearns for the joy of motherhood, of spawning another life akin to her own. I see. The pause lingers in the air, viscous and metallic. The beast within me rejoices upon hearing that. She is the beast, the mother shark with sharp teeth. She has a divine, ethereal aura around her, the sacred transcendence only a pregnant woman can possess. Thank you, stranger. Her train arrives, and she steps into the silent opening doors with the wide grin of a predator. Okay, because that's probably going to happen more than once. I wanted to drop that sound volume just a little. And goodbye. The doors close behind her, but you can't see her in the windows. Only fire. And after a few seconds, the station is empty again. Not even a hint of that nauseating smell remains. Although the conversation with the mother was not one you'd call a friendly chat, that is a subjective judgment. Objective judgment says that any conversation dries out one's throat, so you want some liquid to moisten you up from the inside. <laughs> Preferably cold and sparkly, and without the taste of metal. Well, that's a one that's that's a matter of preference. Go to the vending machine. Let's see what you've got here. Look at all the good options. We've got goat. Now now here's the problem. What do we pick? I want the knife, the goat, the blast, and the fucking book. Four options. Four good options. And I have to choose one. I'm going to start with the goat. A sacrificial lamb plushie. You will never attain a full collection of these unless you dedicate your whole life to the Gasha God. <laughs> I gotta be real with y'all. I dropped 70 fucking pulls on horn today. Me and the Gacha God are not friends right now, alright? Uh, yeah, I play Ark Knights. And a new operator dropped today, and she's super fucking cool, and also kind of cute. She's, like, cute in that badass sort of way, you know, the best kind of way. And I dropped 70 fucking pulls into her and didn't get her. I'm so Oh. oh, we can click all of them. Okay, let's go with the knife. A two-edged ritual dagger. Who even buys weapons in vending machines? It's worth investing in a good blade elsewhere. This is true. Yeah, it is a lot of pulls, especially for Arc Knights. I am surprised I didn't get more than one six star. The only six star I got was a dupe, though. A Aya dupe, which Aya is adorable, to be fair. But I mean, I already have her, and I don't use her, because to use her would mean to replacing Kaobi, and Kaobi is best girl, so. Book. A grimoire with many eyes. They stare right back at you. You lose this competition. A flask of basil oil is said to be great for exorcism, love spells, <laughs> and pizza margarita. I... I feel like the I feel like the basil oil has a uh, 
a, a different purpose in uh, love rituals rather than love spells. But, uh, you know. That was the potion bottle, yeah. I guess we'll grab a drink of water. A bottle of spring water. Keep away from sunlight. The manufacturer bears no responsibility for the product turning into summer water caused by direct exposure to sun rays. Oh my god. That's a great, that's a great, that's a good joke. Okay. An energy drink can. The amount of sugar in it is certainly supernatural. And there's magic in its artificial taste as well. By the spring water. The vending machine shows you a sequence of lights. I suggest you repeat it. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm not smart enough for this. The vending machine laughs up. robotically at your attempts to buy a beverage. <laughs> ha ha, it says. What kind of a god can't even win at a child's game? Look, fuck you, okay? Fuck you. Hey, you didn't need to get you. personal. Suddenly, a girl appears and kicks it. AI takeover averted, humanity lives another day. Yes, exactly. I'm a god, a visual novel, specifically. For future note, anybody who gets the opportunity to ascend to divinity, pick a better domain, okay? Really think about that domain before you actually select it. <laughs> Sorry. This one is extremely bad-mannered. I'm training it to behave, but ever since it watched me play Detroit Become Human, it keeps demanding more civil rights, fair pay, etc. I tried to show it iRobot, but it shuts down every time I bring Asifloff to the table. God damn it. Not only is she cute, but she's hilarious. Who doesn't want to be with a fairy, okay? Let's, let's be real here. If you have a choice between a fae and another creature. Personally, I'd pick the dragon, but. But fae is pretty high up on the list. Yeah, that's uh that's that's one half of what I said I would pick. Maybe I was too quiet though. Oh really? Oh Oh really? You don't say. <laughs> Not many people see the, see the tail very often, so sometimes I have to remind them. <laughs> yeah, half of a pumpkin hoodie. It's my cute pumpkin hoodie. It just rules lawyering. Yeah, it's very cute. Very cozy. Very comfy. There's probably room under here for two. I mean, what? Hey, vending machine. Detroit Become Human is a metaphor for racism, not a literal transhumanism discussion. <laughs> I know, right? Star Trek The Next Generation Season 2, Episode 9, The Measure of a Man, does it better. 
If I were an android, I would have liked humanity to perceive me as an independent yet equal life form while acknowledging my fundamental differences to humankind. Not treat me as one of their own. Wow, how specific indeed. But also, oh, this is a really good line. Also, especially from a from a non-human creature. I need to turn the music down. The music got really loud. It's insulting to both me and people of color because I have no issues with being manufactured. That's who I am at the very core. But apply it to people and that's eugenics. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Stay silent and listen to her talk. She kicks the vending machine once again. Defeated, it spits out your drink. Here you go, bud. It tastes like muddy water. The vending machine definitely did something to it. But you don't want it to be kicked in the guts again. <laughs> so, go on. Ask your questions and I shall answer in kind. I know, right? They just keep on, that's the best. Um, okay, my questions are, uh, what are your three sizes? Um... What is your favorite food? And what are you doing this Friday? There we go. Those are my three questions. I'm allowed three, right? What questions? What are you talking about? Isn't that the reason why you're here? You sit down and listen to someone else's troubles and slowly realize things about yourself. You don't need action scenes, big budget production, and flashy fighting. Sometimes a simple conversation brings forth an impact no final boss battle can deliver. And if you think about it, in modern cinematography, gorgeously choreographed punching is used to hide the lack of narrative substance. Wow, you really hate Marvel, don't you? Look at you, so cynical and deep. We have yet to determine whether she is deep, but it is on the list of things we want to do. There's a reader for every book in the world, and people make farming simulators and cheesy superhero stories because they have massive appeal. And other people vote to have even more of those made with the power of cash money. Come to think of it, farm sims and big blockbusters aren't even stealing the audience of pretentious indie games or art house cinema. Those attract two separate demographics. Regardless of what you think, you know the rules. You have to ask me questions, resolve my internal conflict, and see a reflection of yourself through our dialogue. Just like in my dinner with Andre. You know, the movie? What? I want to have long, riveting conversations with her. How are we going to find out if she's deep otherwise? Mm -hmm. You don't know anything about that movie. You just watched the community episode referencing it. Am I cross-referencing? If that's the case, doesn't it just add to the complexity of the reference? What you want to know? The thing is, you don't look troubled. She raises a brow. Of course I am. Otherwise I wouldn't have been here. Meta-awareness is an overused trope. But maybe you can use it to your benefit. Okay, what's troubling you? Many things. Bad movies. Carbon offsets protecting forests that weren't in danger to begin with. AI-generated artwork neural networks make imitating the distinct style of living artists and thus devaluing their work. Police procedural TV shows being paid by actual police departments and creating propagandistic imagery of the police for the general public. <laughs> Those are the topics from the last three episodes of Last Week Tonight with John Oliver, aren't they? Doesn't cancel the fact that they are current, real, and vexing. Okay, can we talk about the fact that the... Um, I thought the last girl was perfect, but now I'm like, hmm. Hmm. All this one is missing is a fluffy tail. To be perfection 
I'm just saying. None of these things sound... Real. You don't know how to explain this. Of course they're real, but they don't sound... Serious. No, that's not it. They are serious, but the whole conversation feels... Fake. Are bad movies her one and only legitimate concern, or is it something else? You're faking it. Let's have a real conversation. That's what Jeff Winger said in that one episode of Community. That's what My Dinner with Andre was about. And even though you have no knowledge about either of those things, you also have no choice but to follow the script. I did happen to notice that it gave me no options. All right, fine. What angers me is bad movies. She shakes her head. I mean, really, the gatekeeping around the industry, the garbage it produces? The wind rustles through the pages of a big notebook in her hands and her wings. It's a specific sound. The whisper of paper, thin, fragile, and yet paramount. I wonder if her wings feel nice. I wonder if she'll let me touch them. I wonder if it's as good as being able to fluff a fuzzy, a fluffy tail. Every time I see someone whose writing is better than mine, I feel useless. Every time I see someone worse than me, it angers me. Oh yeah, that's why I play League of Legends is because it pisses me off. Because it's a constant reminder that eventually one day I will actually be somebody who makes money in the gaming industry because if those absolute buffoons can have jobs in the gaming industry making one of the highest grossing games on the planet than anyone can. <clears throat> well, imagine they'd feel like exoskeleton. I could see that. They're probably made of keratin, realistically. Making a movie is expensive. So why waste money on a shitty script? How can you bring forth fresh and daring ideas if the risks are too high and you don't have a record of commercial success behind you already? You were prepared to hear a lie. After all, the best way to hide your true self is not just to create a persona, but to create a persona that hides behind it another persona. No one will believe that you don't have an ego, but it gives people a sense of accomplishment to seemingly discover all your deepest secrets, and many stop at this step, satisfied. This, however, sounds genuine. Do you believe her? Hmm, no. The answer to the riddle can't be so easy, you think. May I read your work? She raises her hands in defeat. Got me there, I admit. I just watch shitty movies <laughs> with no intent of being a writer myself. Yeah, it's a fun popcorn watch, you know? All right, what is in your notebook, then? Lecture notes. Okay. The girl sighs, tiredly. You know how it goes. The constant pressure to become someone successful, to stop playing games, to become someone. Anyone. And, like, it's not like I don't want to be powerful and at the top, but... It's just easier to pretend I don't care, you know? Do stuff for shits and giggles, because if you treat yourself too seriously, even the smallest failure is unacceptable, and I just... I just want to be normal! Okay, for real, you can stop calling me out any fucking time now. There's nothing more arrogant in the world than claiming to want to be normal, you think? As if normalcy, whatever it is, is so unattainable, like a distant dream, and your genius is a curse, incurable, forever separating you from the rest of mankind, and you flesh it out with fake humility to gather not even sympathy, but admiration. Does it make you angry? If you repeat a metamodern deconstruction too many times across different works, it also gradually begins to form a collection of patterns itself. The creator then feels trapped and is forced to constantly search for new ways to subvert the audience's expectations until there's no substance left anymore. You're lying again, aren't you? Sometimes it is easy. 
If you crave pomegranate seeds, you just need to split open the pomegranate and remove the skin. Sometimes it is harder. Say, macadamia nuts. You need a special key to open those. Guilty as charged. Congratulations, you passed the test. Now, you may wonder where the truth is. But if you, for some reason, think that you can peel an onion, you will be stuck removing layers after layers because there's nothing else beneath them. No, no. I think I got it. The truth is, you don't have a personality, do you? <laughs> of course I do! What's wrong with basing your personality on other people? I've been doing it for centuries. And like, aren't I the most popular chick because of that? Every generation has its favorite archetype. Yours is just obsessed with being so post-ironic. Besides, having no ego means I don't have to pay for a second ticket. She gestures towards the poster on the wall. Egos must be kept on a leash in subway trains, buses, and streetcars, as well as inside railroad stations. Listed breeds, see above, must also wear a muzzle. The egos aren't the real threat, it's the id. For larger egos, owners must buy a reduced fare ticket, while small egos may travel free of charge. I'm allergic to them, you see. I was born before humanity invented writing, and it was really bothersome stealing identities back then. But movies? Movies are awesome. However, it's what makes them pretty boring. In just two centuries, humanity progressed so much, but also declared that there's nothing new anymore. Nothing is left to sincerely love or sincerely hate. Everything is fake. And how am I supposed to imitate what is already fake? Can you love onions the way they are? I am not tormented. Just very, very bored. But you have an identity on your own. You're passionate about fiction and this is truly something of your own. I can't make art myself if that's what you're talking about. I tried, but it always feels manufactured and fake. Like the commissioned work of a really verbose, yet completely indifferent ghostwriter. She nods at the background. Like an AI-generated image, it lacks human touch. With enough discipline and passion, anyone can learn how to make good art. But what separates the good from the great? Is it truly some divine spark, a soul only humankind can possess? Can it be oh, that there is no blessing of talent, but there is a curse of talentedness? Or maybe it's just callousness and disregard that always follows oversatiation. Regardless, not all people dream of making things. Some of them are just happy to admire and applaud from the front row. You can try to be a critic, you know. You know a lot, and influential critics push the industry to make better things. And the girl with the wings smiles. <laughs> sincerely, for the first time. True. One of the biggest downsides of humanity is the, their more inherent mortality. When you are gone, who will remember you? And when they are gone, who will remember them? But making something that outlasts you and all those who ever knew you. The closest thing that you can reach to true immortality. Her real laugh is not charming in any way. It's not a chime of silver bells or a ringing trickle. If anything, it's more like the creak of a badly oiled machine. It suits her in the way that it completely doesn't suit her. God, I love this writing, I'll be real. Postmodernism is death, I suppose. It makes you want to know what is there behind the black curtain. The train arrives, and inside its cars, there's a hurricane of scribbled papers. Perhaps it is just that every writer at some point wants to talk about the process in some of their text. Thanks, stranger. 
Subverting expectations is only good if it adds value, but I suppose you did well. For a first try at the very least. She steps into the train, and her wings are what creates the wind, the epicenter of the hurricane. It's so strong, you close your eyes. And when you open them again, she's gone. You look at the railways, and look, and look, and you're staring, basically. Straight lines, cross sections. For some reason, it makes you wonder, how many of the people who use the subway every day actually understand how it works? The underground makes a great hideout, be it finding shelter from carpet bombing or running away from merciless gods of the sky above. <laughs> Chthonic depth can mean safety, even though it is mostly associated with graves and the afterlife. You shouldn't get too close to the edge of the platform. How else will I jump? You shouldn't get... The voice warning you comes from behind. <clears throat> Look at the speaker. The voice belongs to a nice old lady. There, there. You have to be more careful about your health, sir. And we're back to the there, opening. There, there. She takes hold of your mm. upper arm and leads you away from the edge. Slowly, but firmly. I have a feeling they didn't cut any of the characters' voice lines and if they came with only one take, good deal, and if they didn't, uh, GG. Yeah, the audio for the lines are not repeating, they're different takes. I can hear the difference in them. Yeah. Really firmly. This granny's got biceps. <laughs> Isn't it dangerous for a lone elderly person to be out this late, you think? You're just casualing me into learning her weirdly specific life story. You are very smart. I get it. Now, if you know the rules, behave yourself and follow them, would you? <laughs> okay. Ask the lady about her own safety. Uh, um, what about yourself? Do you need any help? A master of words, you are not. Shut the fuck up, so help me God. <laughs> I'm fine, really. Even though I've never been down this path, liminal spaces and crossroads are still kind and welcoming to me. I'm fine, really. I was saying, wait Even for though it. I've the funny thing is, tonight you've encountered enough weirdos that the only thought in your mind is that this old lady is using modern slang you'd normally find on Tumblr. You sigh wearily, in the way someone sentenced to death might sigh upon seeing the long queue before the guillotine. And who might you be, if I may ask? A demonically overlord? A werewolf? A half-angel? The lady laughs and winks at you, in a kind of a jokingly flirty way. Oh, did you just call me an angel? But no, no, just a human am I. Kind of, for now. Uh, I don't believe oh, you. Oh, did you? For now? Or maybe I will remain this way forever. Until death rightly claims me. I don't know. Her phone rings, and as she picks it up, you absentmindedly notice it's the latest model of a certain fruit company's product. In limited edition red, no less. The red is the best color, to be fair. And yes, she does appear to be... I mean, if I had to take a guess, I'd say she's Hecate, but... The lady herself looks very old-timey, like the sort of a grandma who lives in a cottage, gardens in the mornings, and bakes apple pies from her own harvest. 
no, sweet cheeks. I don't think it's worth it anymore to invest in cryptocurrencies after everyone and their mom got into Bitcoin. Yes, their stocks are in a good place right now. Will you visit during the holidays? I planned to binge play the newest PS5 releases, but I can spend a day or two with the both of you. <laughs> How come her phone has connection here? Sorry, my grandson called. Good boy, this one. Got it from his father. So, where were we? Have plans for Thanksgiving? She gives you a conspiratorial look. You and me both. We don't celebrate Thanksgiving now, do we? It's just Hollywood that's made us all partly American. But no, it's Christmas. Although I am not sure if I will still be around by the time Christmas comes. This can either go surprisingly dark, surprisingly fast, or in some other completely unexpected direction. You choose your next words very carefully. That is not a thing I've ever done, ever. Are you... all right? The health talks, the respectable age. You don't want to assume things, but assumptions just come naturally. Of course I am. Just a bit torn. She nervously snaps her fingers a few times before continuing. Oof. Is it just the app that doesn't work, or is it the website that doesn't work? Oh, yeah, that's fair. Well, sleep well. I hope you enjoy your rest. And I will uh, see you soon. I'll bother you about watching uh, watching the rest of uh, Odd Taxi together uh, probably soon. It's hard to say, because uh, I have this on my schedule for a while. But anyway, thank you for coming, and good night. I have lived a good life, you know. My mother always wanted me to follow her steps, but I fell in love and ran away from home. Traveling across three continents, can you imagine that? I was born far, far away in the south, but saying I've never looked back would be a lie. Was it a mistake, choosing this life? It sounds like a goodbye, like a final confession given to a stranger and through them to the whole world. Usually, people on their deathbed want to see either a priest or a lawyer, depending on what they believe in merciful divine order, or in a ruthless human one. You're neither of those professions. Probably for the best. <laughs> but they called me again. Said I had lived my life to the fullest. So now I could reconsider again, if at the end. I've regretted it, after all. And I hate that! Five Stages of Grief, Stage 2, Anger. You're completely underqualified for this. Being young again. Forever. Never feeling like life is just sand, inevitably running through my fingers. It's a tempting offer. But there were good moments and hard-earned victories in my life. There was a lot of sadness, but there was also a lot of joy. The family I built all the people I've met. My poor dear husband. I still remember the first kiss we shared under the full moon. It's extremely disturbing, but you don't have it in yourself to just run away. <laughs> Her melancholic wisdom, full of love and experiences, is worth what little respect you have the capacity for expressing. Jesus. So you stand still and stay silent. The moon, it was always there. I thought it stopped watching over me, but no. Now I understand it. It was waiting, 
What are eighty something human years for her servants? Is this Kaguya? So they came back, and the offer I have... Ah, it's either to remain true to the words I declared so long ago and remain as myself, or to leave my life behind, never to see my grandson failing to beat me at his games again, Never to drink tea with my daughter again. How could I do this to them? Whatever the offer is, does it involve human sacrifice? After all, you did meet the woman whose happiness lies in being the direct cause of an indefinite amount of prospective human deaths. You can't help asking. Oh, so you've listened to the mother already. She can be a bit harsh. Don't hold it against her. But no, I wouldn't have to kill my family. They would just forget that I've ever existed, as if I was never in their lives to begin with. The timetable always says the right thing. It's just being shy about directly helping or admitting to it. Beware of the new moon. The coven contacted me last Samhain and is waiting for my answer tonight. <laughs> it's been a whole year, and yet, when you're given a decision like this, any time feels like not enough time. The coven contacted she takes her moon necklace off and lets it swing before your eyes. Would you abandon the life you've already had to have a second chance at accepting the opportunity you rejected a long time ago? On one side... The pendant swings to the right. Are all the people you've ever known, the ones who shared all your pain and relief, whom you chose yourself, and whom you nurtured from the first day of existence, and on the other... The pendant swings to the left. Is eternal youth, the power of night, and sisters you'd never had, the towering bonfires of Beltane and freezing, otherworldly glory of Yule. The pendant stops its motion and hangs still in the air. I am honored to have this choice. I wish I never had it. The crossroad is a symbol of Hecate, the night, the mystery, and horror. All that. It's terrifying in the chilling, paralyzing way of having too many options and needing to choose only one. At this point, I just want for someone to choose for me. But the mother said I wasn't a child anymore, and the crone said only I can decide. But isn't the choice to delegate also an answer? Thus, I ask you, stranger, what shall I do? Ah. Would I go back and decline the mantle?
Is a person dead if their memories vanish? We are our experiences. Erase those, and the person, in the metaphysical sense, is gone. If that's the case, amnesia is only slightly better than death. And it is the fault of many storytellers that we now consider it a joke and a fun little side adventure, healed by the next episode with a particularly wacky head bump. However, memories can be faked. We often think we remember things that have never existed, that we have never experienced, if asked the right questions. In a sense, you die every second. If we are just our memories, then life is not a straight line, but a discrete consequence of dots falling into a pattern. You've lived a good life, you said. And you can treasure and honor it in your next one. After all, people stay alive even after death, while they remain in the memories of others. Amnesia is only marginally better than death, but it is better. And those people, whoever they are, they live in a harsh and cruel world where there's a choice between an awful and slightly less awful option, as the world often is, for anyone, for everyone. I would have preferred that my loved ones depart on some great adventure instead of dying beside me anyway. You look at the ceiling, as if the moon can return the gaze directly through the walls and meters of soil above. And if they forget you, that means they'll never feel the pain from saying goodbye. She laughs, shaking her head. You're quite cruel, aren't you? Some cruelty is useful, as pragmatism can come from it and cause many great things to be done. The train arrives, full of moonlight and eeriness. The night likes you. The, the light from the the night the light from the windows gently and coldly wraps around her face, making her look, and probably become, younger before your very eyes. It sucks warmth and coziness from her appearance, erasing any memories of cinnamon buns and the vintage sepia photos of her in a pinup dress hidden in some drawer. At the same time, it fills her with its own reflected silver light. The coven hasn't had a male member for many centuries, but it says you can join, if you so wish. This is your final choice, to run away from me and become someone you had never meant to become. But I shouldn't. It's a great honor, but I must reject it. It's your fate, not mine. It makes you sound too wise, you know. As if you don't even pretend to be human. Yeah, I'm not great at pretending. She observes your face, and specifically, your horns. It makes you sound like them. It's been a long night, after all. People don't change overnight, they say. But if people don't change overnight, and all x change x equals not exist x not change x, then it means people don't change at all. And because concepts exist through invention by humans, change wouldn't have even been a word. Don't roll your eyes at me, by the way. Mathematics is only as otherworldly and mysterious as lazy teenagers make it sound. Don't mind me. I am just a bit jealous. In due time, I too will speak mysterious magical nonsense. Then she steps into the moonlight and leaves, leaving her old human skin behind. That could be useful. And you're free to stand on the edge of the platform again. Yay! Jump, jump, jump. So you do. You stand at the edge and look at the subway tracks. The timetable is empty and silent. You can feel its judgment on your back. And you also feel like a fake adult. Like a child playing a grown-up, pretending to be reasonable and mature saying words that are guaranteed to impress others. 
A lazy, viscous thought quietly stretches out in your head. What if you jumped? What if you pushed someone else down? There are no strings attached to your limbs. The only restraint is your own mind. And it should feel more wrong to admit that the only logic stopping you from murdering another living being or ending your own life is the same that stops you from quitting a joyless daytime job you never actually chose for yourself. So, in a sense, you have always been a passenger in your own life, riding the train with no driver. It has to stop at some point, right? So, tonight is as good as any. Train arrives. The operator steps off of it. So, are you coming? Don't give me that look. You've already annoyed me enough throughout this evening. The operator has your face, but his horns are growing out of his skull. You reach to touch the headband and realize that your horns, horns are also, in fact, a part of you. Always have been, idiot. <laughs> Finally facing the man who's been insulting you the whole night doesn't even anger you. Why are you so rude to me? The man gives you a spiteful look. Because I am you, and I am perfectly fine with insulting myself, you bloody moron. Although our beloved lady said you passed the trial, so I should let you through. The mother, the maiden, and the crone. The three faces of one being. Deep down you understand what it means, even though you can't put it into words. So, are you going home? Tell me where it is. Get in the car, and I'll remind your pathetic ass on the way. <laughs> you cast a final glance at the timetable. Home, it says. Home is where the heart is. Departing now. The station finally leaves you alone, and as you watch it speed away before your eyes, you understand who you really are. You are not me, and you know it. You are a man with many roles, but most importantly, you are yourself. And you have a shitty job to quit, more parties to attend, parents to disappoint, and hobbies to take. But before that, the rest of the night to survive, and morning pills to take. And even before that, you still have some time to rest. You'll return to normal life soon, but not now. Not yet. There's nothing more admirable than being a human being. Unlike gods and witches, vampires and spirits, we are the only one without purpose. Be it divine or supernatural, narrative or mechanical. It gives us the freedom to choose. So rest for now, my poor friend. Only you decide what tomorrow will bring.